Let's take a look at how to fully define our sketches. Making sure your sketch is fully defined is very important when you move on to creating new features from your design. And this implies a design intent and that you actually thought out what it was you were trying to create. I'm going to go ahead and exit this out. So first, let's go ahead and create a line. I'll create one across like so and hit escape. Notice I need three dimensions in order to define this line. I'm going to go ahead and select this line and delete it. I'll create a line again. Click to place one point. And this time I'm going to go ahead and enter a value into the blue box. I'll press one and hit enter. Then I'll hit escape to exit the line. And now notice I only need two dimensions. So one dimension that we always need is an actual length of the entity that we are placing down. Well, where are the other two dimensions coming from? Let's go ahead and delete this line one more time. If I was to place a circle, I'll go ahead and put a value of one, zoom out just a little bit, and make sure to deselect the circle command. Notice again, I need two dimensions. Well, what we need to do is we need to position it along the X and the Y. So even though we defined our circle, we didn't correctly define where in this 2D space it is located. In order to help this out, we have this icon down here, show all degrees of freedom. If I was to select this, notice I have this up, down, left, right cursor. This shows that I can move the circle in all those directions. If I was to create another circle over here, hit escape, make sure I'm able to see the degrees of freedom. You see, I have the same cursor here, as well as one on the edge that I can increase or decrease the circle. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have that selected and delete it for now. So let's go ahead and lock down this circle into our 2D geometry space. To do so, we can go ahead and select a dimension. And we can grab it from either the center or the edge and grab the origin here. Hit OK for this dimension. And notice we only need one more dimension in order to fully define it. Currently, our dimension is still active. So if I go selecting things, it will keep providing a new dimension. I'll go ahead and maybe select the edge again, select this point, and I'll drag out towards the right this time and place it down and hit OK. And now my circle is fully constrained. And notice it also changed colors. So whenever something is green, it means you need to add more dimensions and it's not fully constrained in order, it's not fully constrained within 2D space. I'm going to go ahead and delete this dimension. But as you can see, as every time I click on it, it's not highlighting and said it's giving me a dimension. Well, that's because I'm currently in the dimension tool still. You have to make sure to exit out of that. And then we can highlight these dimensions and move them around as needed. I can delete this one and delete this one as well. So whenever you create any of these drawing, a line, arc, rectangle, circle, any of these drawing commands, we can always, as we're creating them, enter in the values that we want two and then possibly if I hit tab I can go ahead and enter an angle as you can see it stays locked in a length of two maybe I want a degree of 45 hit enter and now this is constrained to that angle and this length here but again I need four dimensions if I go ahead and select this one I still need two dimensions for this line to lock it into the X and Y if I go ahead and show this here you can see I'm able to still continually move it around. So if you want to figure out which dimensions you need to constrain better or dimension, you can go ahead and use this icon here. And it's very helpful to show you the degrees of freedom of your objects that you're creating. And I might have done that a little too quickly. So let me go ahead and do it again. For example, if we're using this line here, I can always select a point and I have two boxes to enter. As you can see, one is a angle and the other is a length. So a direction and a magnitude, for example. You can always enter a value and hit tab. And then it jumps to the next dialog box for you to enter your next coordinate. For example, here, it's going to be an angle. I can hit five and press enter. I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape and X out of that. And I'm gonna delete these two lines here. And that construction line and this construction line as well. We can also turn things into construction lines I can go ahead and place a vertical line here. I can select a line and come over here and create a construction line. This can help in the aid of 
creating a hole or some other geometry that needs to be positioned according to some line or other geometry that we may not exactly need for our feature. So it's just a helping line, a helping aid for us to create other geometry. But remember, even though I create this construction line, it still needs three dimensions in order to fully define this construction line as well. So whenever we're trying to define something and have it fully constrained, what we're really looking to do is to tie it into the origin. That's the main idea there. I'm going to go ahead and delete this construction line for now since I'm not going to use it. So we always need to define any value of the object itself. So dimension it as it's a standalone object and then dimension it into 2D space. And notice the smart dimension will know where to place it. Let's create one more object. I'll create a rectangle, except I'm going to do the three point rectangle here, here, and give it a little bit of a height, like so. Now, if I want to dimension this, I can always select this line, pull down and give it a horizontal dimension, pull, pull towards the right and give it a vertical dimension. But if I come up to the top, I'm still only getting that horizontal and vertical direction. But what if you want to know the actual length of that line? Well, make sure we always have dimension selected. When we select the entity we want to dimension, we can right click and we have a few options here. I can choose aligned and now the dimension will be aligned to the object. I can go ahead and place and accept that value for now. So always make sure to fully define your shapes, just like this purple one here. This green one indicates that it's not defined. 